So would you review your topic, please? Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Okay, cool. But um, yeah, for yeah, for today's um pitch training workshop, we're gonna cover three topics. The first is the hack presentation judging criteria. The second, I'm gonna go over some pitch fundamentals that will help you build your hack pitch. And also I'll wrap things up um, lastly with some hack tips and tricks that you can use to make a better hack presentation. So um, let's jump into the uh, presentation judging criteria because to ace the test, you have to learn what they're testing for. So the goal of today's workshop is to learn the fundamentals to build, um, to build a hack pitch. So if you look at the presentation judging criteria in the hack website, there's four categories. The first is requirements. How well does the system satisfy the requirements of the challenge? The second is originality and design. To what extent is the solution or app creative and innovative? Three, utility and impact. Do the functional components of the solution or app seem user friendly, or would it have a or seem like it would have a positive impact impact on the users? And four, presentation and delivery. Did the team provide a well executed and engaging presentation within the three minute time limit? and incorporate required information to help their judges make a judgment. So yeah, these are the requirements. Um, definitely look at the, uh, sorry, these are the, these are the presentation judging criteria. Please like look, get to know, um, get to know these criteria. like memorize this rubric because this rubric is how you're gonna get scored on for your hack pit, your hack on um, pitch and hack presentation. And remember, you only have three minutes. So practice, practice, practice. So um, in this next section of this workshop, I'm gonna talk about some pitch fundamentals. The first is the bar pitch, the second is the elevator pitch, and then we're the last is the hack pitch, which we're gonna make by combining the bar pitch and the elevator pitch. Learning these fundamentals will help you form your hack pitch. And the cool thing about um, all these pitches is they scaffold upwards, meaning that if you have your bar pitch, that bar pitch will help you build out your elevator pitch. And that elevator pitch will eventually help you build out your hack pitch. So let's jump right into it. So um, I'm going to first talk about the bar pitch. Um, and the bar pitch is usually about 20 seconds long. The reason why it's called a bar pitch is um, the scenario is that you're at a bar with a stranger, an old friend, a relative, someone who you don't really talk to a lot or is in like your friendship, your friend, your friend circle. And then they ask you, oh, what do you do? Or, oh. What is your hack solution? Your response um, or your bar pitch needs to be basic and straight to the point. The goal is not to overwhelm the um, person you're speaking to with a bunch of details, but the goal is to build excitement and interest to the person that you're talking to so that you can set up the next set of conversations or the next meeting. So just get basic, straight to the point, and build excitement and interest. There's a bunch of ways to do the bar pitch, but the template that the the, the template that bar pitches usually have is something like this. App name slash solution name is a product slash service that helps a particular audience do something that brings value to that audience. And that something that brings value to the audience, that's what we call in the product making world a value prop or a value proposition. What value is your thing doing for that particular audience? And also for people um, on this call, don't worry about like writing stuff down or taking notes. Like this call is recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube um, at a later date. So just relax and absorb for now. So in this next slide, I'm going to be showing, in the next couple of slides, I'll be showing some examples of bar pitches using some, maybe using some products that we might know about. The first is Airbnb. So for this bar pitch, it's Airbnb is an online platform that helps homeowners rent out the extra rooms in their house. So as you can see here, um, you can see what the you know what Airbnb is, what the target audience is, homeowners, and what value proposition we're bringing homeowners, which is rent, giving homeowners the ability to rent out the extra rooms in their house. So the one thing I want to note about this bar pitch, and the reason why I added that asterisk next to homeowners, is that Knowing your audience is very important because based on what your audience is, you can tailor that value pr proposition to hit home and directly target that audience. So let's look at another example. Here, we have the same product, which is Airbnb. 
But the difference is I'm using, I'm pitching this to a different target audience. I'm pitching it to travelers like you and me, the average consumer of Airbnb. So here in this pitch, I'm saying Airbnb is an online platform that helps travelers rent rooms from local homeowners. So as you can see here, the target audience is travelers and the value, the value prop that I'm bringing to travelers is the ability to rent rooms from local homeowners. The key point I want to drive with these two um, bar pitches is that based on um, knowing who your audience is, you can take the same product or solution and tailor it towards that um, audience to make to make it um, to make your pitch hit home. Because as a traveler, like I feel like I would care more about the ability to rent rooms from locals versus um, the other side, the other half, which is being able to rent out my extra rooms. So let's put Airbnb aside. Let's look at another example. So in this next example, uh, I'm going to use Slack. Slack is an app that helps organizations communicate and share files via instant messaging. So with this bar pitch, um, in this example, we have two separate value props. The first being communicate, the second being share files. And both of those value props are valuable to our target audience, which is organizations. And in this bar pitch, what I'm also doing is explaining, explaining how we achieve the value prop. So what this example is showing is that essentially you can, um, you can have your bar pitch have two value props as just as long as you tie those value props back into how you achieve that value prop. Because um, as you all know, um, since I assume most of you all for the hack have Slack, you all can use Slack to instantly message each other um, to communicate and also share files. Those are the two value props that we have, and we're tying back how we achieve that value prop through a feature um, of Slack, which is instant messaging. So that's one example. Um, let's go to another example. And I'm going to use my, um, my team's hack project as an example. So in this pitch, we have Love Milk Tea is a map app that helps UH Manoa students navigate the UH Manoa campus and get info on new events through crowdsourcing. So here I've explained to my audience that, oh, Love Milk Tea, it's a map app. The target audience or the target of this uh, map app is UH Manoa students. And the value props I'm offering or the value I'm giving those students is the ability to navigate through the campus and get info on new events. And I achieve those value props by crowdsourcing. Also, um, there, I, I know there's a slight disconnect between like Map App and Love Milk Tea, but basically the reason why the Map App is called Love Milk Tea was because our team name was Love Milk Tea. And um, when we were filling out the forms like for Hack, we accidentally put our team name as our app name also. So we kind of decided to roll with it. But basically, yeah, it, it went well. So we decided to roll with it. So everything worked out. So now that um, I showed you folks my team's um, hack bar pitch, I want you folks to try it out. So let's practice the bar pitch together. Um, so what I'll be doing um, in the next three minutes is putting this up on the screen, putting the template up on the screen, and giving you folks time to write down your bar pitches. And after the three minutes are over, we're going to take turns um, sharing. I'm going to call on about probably three, three people to share their bar pitches. and. I'll give some feedback and we can go from there. Also, um, don't, don't worry about being perfect on the first try. Um, we're here to practice, we're here to grow, we're here to learn. So yeah, don't worry, this is your time. And I'll start the three minutes. And also feel free to ask me any questions relating to the bar pitch within like these three minutes as well.
One more minute. Okay, awesome. So those three minutes are up. So um, yeah, let's let's hear some bar pitches. And again, like you don't have to be you don't have to be perfect on the first try. Oftentimes, when um, pitches are made, they're not perfect on the first time. They go through multiple iterations. They go through lots of practice, and they go through lots of refinement. So don't be afraid. Um, but before I start randomly picking people, um, does anyone want to volunteer to go first? Anyone? Okay, cool. I, oh, yes. Uh, I'll volunteer. <clears throat> um, I put right now we we don't have like a like oh, a oh, unique sorry, name. Um, oh, sorry. Um, when you go first, could um, uh, could you tell me um your name and team name just so I, like I I it's, can put uh, you together. Bibiana and our team name is Bops. Okay. Um, we don't have like a unique name for our application. Would you recommend getting a unique name? I. I would say for now, like just just call it. Um, right now, it's just called Bob's Marine Debris. That's fine. That's fine. For now, that's fine. Um. Yeah. Uh, my pit bar pitch is is a web web and phone application that helps tourists, locals, and organizations report, record, and track marine debris here in the state of Hawaii. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I I like it. It's um very straightforward. Um. One one feedback I have is um I'm curious if like there are ways that like you can that um that long string of like that long string for that um target audience or particular audience I'm wondering if like there's you can find a way to condense it into like something like smaller. So that's a feedback you don't have to answer or find a solution now, but um it's just feedback. But aside from that, this is like a really good first pass. So thank you for going first. Um, all right, so I need two more. Uh, I need two more people to volunteer to hit my quota. So, is there any other Taren, volunteers? Taren, Taren Takabayashi, uh, you can go since you were so kind as to type yours in the screen. <laughs> volunteer. It's like, oh, bummer. Oh, what? Oh, um, oh, what happened? Oh, she's having issues with her mic. So um, do you want me to read it for you? Just give me a uh, Yes, that would be great. Uh, Malama Hanua is a web app that helps CMDR staff and third-party contractors locate and keep track of large marine debris through its disposal process. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I like I like what I'm hearing so far. I'm like, I think as as an audience member, like it's it actually gives me interest to like um to ask like what the disposal process is. So like hearing this for the first time makes me really interested in like in the next set of conversations. So I think like this is a really good first pass. It keeps like because again, like with the first um with the bar pitch, you're trying to generate interest, um interest and excitement so that you can move on to the next set of conversations. So yeah, it's a really good first pass. Does anyone else um does anyone else want to volunteer? Just All right. No. <laughs> oh. No, I think you need to you need to pick someone for me. I don't like I, I, uh, I don't Okay, I'm going to randomly pick somebody, so I hope you're ready. Uh Jacob how do you feel about saying something? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm Jacob from Team T seven 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 plus. Um, we don't have uh, an app name right yet. Yeah, no we don't have like a, but um, it's an application that um serves like client or like clinics to connect um with people um that need to find clinics. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah, that's a good first pass. Um I'm curious if like you can condense the um people the people that need to connect um sorry the people that need to find clinics into like a different to like word it make it like less wordy. But aside from that, like I think this is a good first pass. So yeah, you're good. You're good to go. So yeah, thanks. All right, cool. So I'll move on to the next um, slide. So we're done with the scary um, sharing part. But yeah, overall, I think everyone everyone that shared um, have a really good first pass. So yeah, it's like props, props to you folks. Um, before I close off the bar pitch section, I do wanna um, I do wanna share you folks uh, one quick formula that I use to remember like how bar pitch how how bar pitches are structured. And this is an important formula because it's also the same one um, I use to remember talking points during interviews and also the same one I use to like build the bullet points in my resumes. Because essentially what an interview and like a resume is, is they're kind of like mini pitches that, that allow you to sell yourself to your prospective employer so that you can move on to the next like set of conversations, whether it could be like, you know, you like, like pay discussions or like the next round of the interview. So that quick formula is we do X or Y by doing Z. So very important formula to um, keep in the back of your head, especially if, um, especially since we have like a lot of like college students, like, and a lot of like high school students, like in this call who may be looking for like their next like job or internship. So yeah, that's it for the bar pitch section. Um, next up, we're going to talk about ele elevator pitches. So um Elevator pitches are around 60 seconds, and the scenario is that you're in an elevator with a VIP, and you only have one minute to get their attention and set, set up the next meeting. And the thing about elevator pitches is that knowing your bar pitch actually helps you build your elevator pitch. So the elevator pitch has three components. The first is the intro, the second is the problem statement, and the third is the ask. Um, for the sake of the this hack workshop, I'm not going to be focusing on a lot of the ass because I feel like um everyone here kind of has like the same um ass, which is basically to win the comp to win the hack competition or to get downloads for um for their app or service. So like, don't worry about the ass for now. But I will be talking about what the ask is at the later end of um the section. So let's talk about the intro. So the intro for the elevator pitch is essentially who you are or what you do. And this is pretty much your bar pitch. So because we practiced bar pitches in the last section, we already cleared off the intro requirement in our elevator pitch. So we can check that box off and get and give ourselves a pat on the back. What we haven't done yet is talk about the problem. So the problem or problem statement is essentially what, what is the problem? Who has the problem? And why is this problem important? So a really good tip to um, building a good problem statement is to, is, to put, is to find a way to put your audience in the shoes of your users. Because you know, at the end of the day, like, especially at like a hackathon, a lot of groups are going to go up. A lot of groups are going to pitch. But the audience will probably have around the same question after everyone goes up. And that question would probably be something along the lines of, why should I care? What do I get out of this? What do you, what's like the benefit of this? What's like the negatives of this? Like you have to find a way to put your audience in the shoes of your users or the people that you're helping to make them empathize with you. Another good tip, um, to making a good elevator uh, elevator pitch, and I guess pitches in general, is just this thing called the mom test. So the mom test is essentially a series of questions such as, can your mother, grandpa, niece, et cetera, understand your elevator pitch? Can they repeat it 
to their friends the next day. So essentially what you're doing with your elevator pitch is making sure that it's easily understandable for people who are not close to the problem and have it easily understandable enough so that they can repeat it the next day. Because you know if you can repeat something the next day, then it must mean that it's memorable. So I'm gonna walk you folks through an example of a, um, of a problem statement that goes back to like Love Milk Tea or um, our hack app. And that problem statement is, digital maps of UH campuses are inaccurate. This problem prevents current and prospective students from experiencing all that UH has to offer. Failing to solve this problem leads to decreased retention and decreased enrollment from both in-state and out-of-state students. So here, um, as you can see here, we can, we, we've addressed the what, the who, and the why. The what being what the problem is, the problem being digital maps of UH are inaccurate. Who has the problem? Current and prospective students. That's who the problem affects. And lastly, the why. Why is solving this problem important? So when you explain the why, you can go two ways. Um, you can go negative and you can go positive. I am a negative Nancy, so I went negative with this one. So negative being being showing the audience why, um, what, like what's the what's the impact of not solving this problem? So I mentioned that failing to solve this problem leads to decreased retention and decreased enrollment. But if you want to do something that's plus positive or shows the benefit of solving this problem, you could say something um, for this for this particular example. You could say something like, "Oh, solving this problem leads into an increase of of um, increase of the quality of student life and also drive an increase." and driving attached to other university services. So there's two ways to explain the why, um, but ultimately you wanna show the audience like, hey, like there is something at stake if this problem is not addressed or there's a huge benefit if this problem is addressed. And don't worry about overloading um, your problem statement with a bunch of details, a bunch of data. That's, that's actually not like the goal of the elevator pitch. Like the details and data, that's a future you problem. What we're trying to accomplish with the elevator pitch is actually like you know gathering and also gathering interest so that you can move on to the next um, the next meeting or next conversation. So I know I talked a lot, um, so I will move on to my next slide, which gives me a chance to hear you folks talk. So um, I'm going to leave this slide up um, and give you folks five minutes to start um, generating out your problem statement. Um, and yeah, we're going to take five minutes to. Think up, think up of some problem statements for your, for your particular um, hack project. And after those five minutes, I will be calling folks up if they choose to not volunteer. <laughs> and yeah, we can start the five minute timer. And remember, this is just practice, so no pressure. We're here to get a good running start so that we can iterate um, in the future. And yeah, I'm gonna click timer start. And within these five minutes, I'm open to any questions that you folks have regarding uh, problem statements or elevator pitches. Need some like a the um do 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm just music. I'm just using my phone timer at this point. Yeah, it's fine. We need like a we need like the Jeopardy tune so that we know when we're about to be called on. <laughs> Makes it scarier.
we are two minutes in, but don't worry, you have you folks have plenty of time till that five minute mark. Oh, four minutes in, one more minute to go. All right, so we are just at that five minute mark. Um, and I guess looks like everyone's probably good to go too. So um, is there are there any volunteers? Going once, going twice. I could go. Oh, Yay. awesome. <laughs> uh, so Full Cycle Takeout is responsible for creating and renting out reusable takeout containers. The problem is that people don't always return them, making the program unsustainable financially and unsustainable for the planet. Failing to solve this problem leads to more one-time use products becoming trash and more reusable containers needing to be produced. Awesome. I I really yeah, I really like that. That was a good that was a good first pass. Like you definitely like um illustrated what's at risk. Like, and I think like, you know, one if I were like if I were a judge, like maybe one follow-up question I would ask is like um how is it like unsustainable financially? And I mean, kind of obvious, but I'm very curious what is like, what's at risk, like in the monetary value, but that's just me asking because I'm curious and you've definitely succeeded in making me curious to move forward to the next conversation. So this is, this is a really great first pass. Um, anyone else want to go? All right, I guess I'll have Belma call up someone at random. Okay, Sage Suzuki, you're on deck. <laughs> All right, Sage is not responding. Sage, are you there? Oh, Sage, are you on mute or not on mute? There she goes.
Okay, we can't hear you. Are you speaking? <laughs> Sorry. All right, I think she's pretending. I'm just kidding, Sage. All right, let's try somebody else. We don't want to be here all day. Uh, Carrie Ann Osada. Sorry, you just pulled you out in my... Carrie Ann, are you here? Yes, I am. Um, sorry, I forgot the introduction part. Uh, I'm part of Jacob's team, which is T77, which is to oh. help find, to help so, clinics find. So Hello? Let, let, let's, go, let's go to somebody else because, uh, you know, your team is already been represented. So let's try somebody else. Uh, no, oops, I had a name there. Nolan Carlisle. Nolan Carlisle. So in Hawaii, a lot of people end up not having proper health insurance. This results, this results in stress among those who lack the health insurance, and especially these high prices in Hawaii cause, cause their financial state to worsen more than it already is. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I like I like it. It's a good first pass. Um, I liked how you use uh, the like you know you explain like the the stress stress and financial risk. There's those are two separate. Um, forgot what, I forgot what the term was, but they're two different like sides or sections of like the the needs pyramid. Something of social hierarchy. So like yeah, I like I like that you demonstrate like not only the um like financial like, the financial risk and also like the emotional risk too. So yeah, it's a good first pass. Um. I think it was Maslow need Maslow's needs. Maybe I I have to search that up. But yeah, I, hopefully, you, like I I think that was a good first pass. Okay, do you want one more? Yeah, one more. Tiffany Cruz, just trying to move move through the alphabet, everybody. Tiffany Cruz, are you around? People log on and then just walk away from their computers. Uh, okay. Um, Anson Leung. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I um I don't know who this first speaker was, but I am also doing the full cycle takeout. Um, as but like he said that there is issues of accountability of returning. Um the containers, but I also believe there's a problem with the interactivity between the customer and the program itself. So mm -hmm. by making it a bit more efficient of renting out the containers, it will allow for more customers to participate within this, um, how to say this, uh, in the reduction of single use containers and utensils. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it, yeah. No, th thanks, uh, thanks for the first pass. Like I. I like that for this one, like you went with the, because um, I think your, when your partner went first, um, he went with like the, he took the, he took the option of explaining like what, what's at risk. Whereas you, um, you took the option of, of explaining like the opportunity of impact and getting like more people to onboard to that program. So yeah, I, I like, I, I like, I appreciate that like two of you folks from like the same team were able to I'm take um, this problem statement, go like go different ways. Um, I think like if I were like a judge, I would definitely be more interested in like um asking for what do you mean by like interactivity and um go from there. But overall, like yeah, thumbs up. Like so I, good if, I can, if I can read you one more since uh, it was uh they they did bother to put it in chat, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Uh, healthcare Wahoo is an app that helps uninsured people in Hawaii find affordable health care with the touch of a button. Currently, there are very few open resources for uninsured people to use. This leads to people not having the needed resources to provide themselves with the needed health care. Very good. Yeah, no, that's a good first pass. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned touch of the button because that's like that's like kind of like sprinkling like a little bit of value prop. And also, I think you've definitely hit on um, one of the criteria or like um, categories we had on the rubric, which is making sure things are user friendly because I'm like, I'm sure people want like a seamless pot, like a seamless process for anything that they do. So yeah, it's a good first pass. Thumbs up.
And all right, cool. I think this is it for the uh, elevator pitch section. So yeah, essentially, like this is what the elevator pitch is. It's the intro, it's the problem statement. And lastly, um, usually traditionally, like um, for elevator pitches, they always end with an ask. Um, and it ends up um, becoming like something like, oh, what it, it ends up becoming what you want to get out of your pitch, basically, whether it's like more funding to like fund your app or startup, more downloads for people to try your app, or even like a follow-up meeting or the next steps. So for for the hack pitch, you don't have to think you don't have to think too hard about the ask. Um, just but just make sure you keep these things in mind when you're building um, elevator pitches in the future. So yeah, that's it for elevator pitches. So now we're gonna talk about the hack pitch. So essentially what the hack pitch is, is it's a two minute presentation with a one minute live demo. And in the hack pitch, it's basically your mission to convince the judges that your unique solution is the best. So if we take the hack pitch, we can break it down to four things. Essentially just an intro, basically who you are, what your names are. Um, the bar pitch, which is what we practiced earlier today, the elevator pitch, which we definitely got down, and wrap wrap all those things up with a bit of detail um, and elaborate. So essentially, it's just taking everything that we've worked on already, putting it together, and elaborating. And with the details, you can talk about things like specific pain points, who is affected the most, why your solution is needed, you know, why your team rocks, or what innovative technologies and data that were used to build your solution. So there's a bunch of ways that you can sprinkle detail on um, on your hack pitch that can make it stand out to a lot of your peers. Because I know, like one thing one thing about hack is like you know there's lots of like um, challenges, and sometimes when two when two challenges like have the same solution, I think like the one the one thing that can help like get one over the other is the pitches. Like that's gonna be like a that's gonna be one factor in like how you make yourselves different from like another team that has a similar solution or doing a similar challenge. So let's break down the hack pitch. So the hack pitch is essentially three parts. Um, the intro, which is the intro plus bar pitch. It's essentially who you are, what you do, and what your solution does. The second part is the elevator pitch, which we just practice. Elevator. Um, you want to focus on the problem statement the what, the who, and the why. And lastly, you want to wrap things up by um, explaining some details about your solution. You want to address things like, why does your solution actually solve the problem? How is your solution creative slash innovative? How is your solution user-friendly? What's the impact of your solution? And make sure you do all of these within the three-minute time limit, because you also have to allocate time for like a demo as well. Um, and the key thing uh, about the details about these things um, that I listed down the details details um, about solution section is that it's mostly freestyle. You don't have to follow this format, but this is the best format that I think um, hits all the all the check marks in the hack rubric, which is here. Like those bullets, these bullets I have kind of map to um, all four requirements that the presentation judging criteria has. So. I know we've done like a lot today. Um, so what I'll be what we'll be doing in the next five minutes actually is um, taking time to create our hack pitches. So what I'm gonna do next is give you all five minutes to basically write up your entire hack pitch end to end from the intro plus bar pitch all the way down to like the details about solution. So yeah, let's take five minutes to do that. Um, and after that, I'll be calling two lucky um we will be calling up two lucky folks to share their hack pitch. And don't worry, like this is just practice. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect on the first try. We're here to learn. We're here to have a good stepping stone so that we can take the pitches we make, um, take it home, share it to our friends, and like get feedback from our friends and then iterate and improve. So no pressure. Um, with that said and done, I will start the five-minute timer. And again, like I am open to any like pitch-related questions within these five minutes. So yeah, let's start.
Daddy. Not sure what that was. <laughs> Mom. Mom, Daddy. So the bar pitch, just so you know, is um, essentially your value proposition. Who you are, who you yeah, no one cares. and what you do. Where the elevator pitch is also includes- Can you shut up, please? So uh, who keeps opening their mic and saying something? I can't. Miles? <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That okay. someone's just changing my name on their account. Okay. Uh, do uh, I? You? Did you notice who it was? I had the same. Okay. I'm going to have to shut down that you can change your names. There's something weird going on. Hang on a second here. Okay, so uh, do you see anybody with the same name now because I did that or did they just leave? Okay, there's no Wyatts here anymore. They must have left. Okay, um, I'm gonna give um, you folks like two more minutes, yeah, to um, work on the pitch work, to work on the hack pitch. Okay, uh, I see. So Luke, turn on your camera. So Luke, if you don't turn on your camera and say something to me right now, I'm going to be throwing you out of this event. Okay, I think I found out who the culprit is. He's being removed. Okay, that should solve that. Thank you, Blaze, for your help. And whoever told me it was is Luke. Because as soon as uh, as soon as I uh, say that so you couldn't change your names, he got stuck. <laughs> yeah, no one cares what you gotta say. Oh, now who was that? Did I remove the wrong person? Did anybody notice who that was? Can't turn off your mics. Got the wrong person, oldie. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm turning off your mics, everybody. I'll turn you on as you go to.
Okay, cool. So, um, okay, cool. So we're, okay. So if there's, we're, I'm going to start calling two, um, two people to randomly share their hack pitch from end to end. Um, so let's start. Unless, unless, um, Delma, could you actually search, look for someone at random for the first, yeah. as the first person to get volunteered? Yeah, I'm going to search for somebody at random and I'm going to ask you to turn on your mic. Okay. Because that's the only way you can do it now. I had to shut down your mic so that person could stop interrupting. And if I, if I, uh, if Luke was a legitimate person, I'm sorry. I apparently I kicked out the wrong person. So, um, okay. Jonathan has un 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 unmuted. Sorry, I'm not going to lie. I don't really have a hack pitch uh, prepared. Okay. So Bibiana said she would volunteer. So we're going to ask her to unmute. So Jonathan, if you would remote mute yourself, that would be great. Oops. I think I got the wrong person. Uh, Bibiana. Hello. Uh, I actually, when I started my project, I wrote some stuff up because it's kind of when the pitches are made from the perspective of presenters it's not super straightforward so i like this is what i'm assuming what they want basically okay that, that's that's fine like again like there this is just a template for you to get started so like don't worry like i'm like i'm here to hear it so go for it uh so i guess i'll start with hello i'm the representative for the for the team bops and i'm here to present with here to present you the solution for the marine debris problem uh, in short, uh, from what I gathered from the hack meeting, it seems that there's like multiple organizations that are able to receive the call to remove debris, but they aren't very good at communicating with each other or following up. There's also no way to report and record the type of debris or amount that gets picked up. Uh, they also are requesting a flexible platform that they can advertise to locals so that they can get more uh, reports for de debris pickup. Um, so that would be the what and the who and the I think that's part, part of the why. So our solution to the problem is to make a versatile app that's both a phone app and a website that has two separate faces, one for civilians and one for organizations to use. Uh, the civilians would have, would have the option to report anonymously and the organizations have the option to file reports upon completion of debris pickup, as well as view civilian reports in a list form and be able to use the platform to kind of step-by-step -step go through their process and track where the debris is going and changing, and how it's changing. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is a good uh, good first pass. Um, I think the one feedback I have is just try to lean in um, on a little bit more on why it's user friendly, um, aside from just like listing listing all the features um, that you have, and maybe like in the demo, that's where you show off like how it is user friendly. But as far as as far as like um what we have, like it's it's pretty good. It checks off most of the bullets um on the hack rubric. So rubric. So good first pass. All right. Um, so another one. You want one more? Uh, yeah, one more. Okay, uh, Giorgio, I'm gonna un ask you to unmute and ask you to provide your stuff. Hello. Um, so I currently don't have the name as well, so I'll just call it Frosty Ice. Yeah, Frosty it... Ice is a web application that helps CMDR efficiently manage debris reporting through a centralized communication and reporting system. The existing marine debris reporting system is disorganized and inefficient. This problem prevents CMDR from keeping accurate data and managing marine debris removal. Failing to solve this problem can lead to debris buildup in the ocean and reduced funding. Uh, regarding the details, I, I uh, didn't write the details down, but <laughs> um, I can say, uh, let's see. The solution solves the problem by providing a place where uh, people involved with removing the debris and uh, collecting data can communicate. And it is a mobile responsive application. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I didn't get that part. Yeah. We, we've got the building blocks. So that's like um, good enough for now. Um, I think as a judge, I do like, I would be curious on like what, what the result or like the, the, the impact of like a decrease in funding is. But aside from that, I think we have like some pretty all right building blocks to build our impact pitch. So your homework is to take those building blocks and turn them into something. But overall, like, I think like we got the point. So that's good. We got good, good potential. So thanks, Giorgio. Thanks, Chris. All right. So yeah, I think that's it for the um the hack pitch section. So again, like don't worry about being pitch perfect um on the first try. Like I think what what we're aiming for today is just having a good first pass and making sure that we have something to start with so that we can take it back to our team and iterate, get feedback, and make it better in time for the finals. So I think for all all of you joining me today, I think you've done we've done a really great job in getting like getting those building blocks ready. Uh, before uh, before I end this workshop, I want to close it off with some hack tips and tricks, which I think um, were useful to my to my team's hack final presentation. And I, the first one is just practice, practice, practice. Um, make sure you practice with your teammates and also practice with your peers that don't know the problem that you're solving. Like I want you to. Get feedback and iterate on that feedback. Um, and also, I think, I think the hack finals are like in person this time. But if you can, try to practice on like equipment or like hardware that's kind of similar to the where the final presentations like what the final presentation is using to help you iron out any technical difficulties that might occur on the day of the presentation. The second tip I have is make your audience feel something. Like if you can make the audience laugh or cry, they'll remember you. So. Make sure you're creative, make sure you're engaging and try to have fun with it. It's a lot easier to handle these things if you think of it as sort of like a project presentation in like a, in like a normal high school class versus like a final competition. Like that'll help you with your presentation jitters. The last tip I have is think impact and think value. Think about what impact and value that your solution can bring to users, not only in Hawaii, but like throughout like other parts of like the US or like, you know, other parts that's not within the scope of your current of your current problem. Think about how your solution can scale and, can, and empower others outside the problem space. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my workshop and presentation. Um, I'd like to thank you folks for having me today. And I'd like to say good luck for your final um, final hack presentations. Um, if if you're interested in my career, um, I, I have a profile on LinkedIn. I'm also active on tech Twitter. That's the, or sorry, it's called X now, but this is the old side, but like tech Twitter slash X, whatever they call it now. Um, and also if you're curious in the product that I manage, it's called Windows Terminal. We're a completely open source application. So if you're interested in seeing the code, check out our repo on GitHub. And if you're, if you have a cool feature request, submit it as an issue. Or if you find bugs, submit that as an issue as well. And yeah, that's all I got. Thank you for having me. Why don't you stop sharing your slides for a second here? <clears throat> oh, sorry. No, I'll stop sharing. OK, so first I want to say I, I'm sorry that somebody snuck in. This is the second time this has happened. Um, during this hackathon, I don't know who, whether it's somebody who uh, is in Hawaii or somebody who's mad because I won't let people in from outside of Hawaii participate. I don't know. Um, I'm sorry for that. I, I I may have kicked out somebody who was not really the right person to kick out. And if uh, I check both of the names I kicked out, they don't exist on my roster, my participant roster. So hopefully uh, I got the right guys. <laughs> um, I just, I, I'm going to have to open your mics again this afternoon um, for this afternoon session, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I do want to re reiterate a couple things um, for the, since we're in the pitch training session. Um, it, it's, it, uh, what time is it there? Is it only 1030 there? Oh, right? Yep. Okay. Wow. Okay. Chris, you went way too fast. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's just, let's keep going. Um, if George joins us, great. If he doesn't, uh, we'll, uh, uh, 
maybe maybe I can slack them and say we're we're done early and join us if you can. Here, let me do that first and then um uh hang on a second, guys. Does anybody have any questions for Christopher while I'm typing? This is a good time to ask him. And it could be anything. He likes to answer questions on how he how he got a great job from uh, Microsoft after after uh, doing such great jobs on the on the event hack event. So anybody have any questions for Christopher today? Oh, I can't you can't open your mics. Can you put it in Slack in the chat? Actually, yeah, if you, if you can put it in chat, like I'll, I'll be happy to answer. Let me see if I can. Well, let me, let me, I think I got rid of the perpetrator. I'm going to turn that back on again, ability to unmute yourself. And if it goes bad again, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. So you should be able to unmic yourself, un unmute yourself now. So if you have any questions for him, please. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Wow, everybody's being really quiet now. Is that because you don't know how to unmute your mics or I did something? Okay. Well, that could make this afternoon session go by really quickly, everybody. <laughs> um, could somebody try unmuting themselves and see if they can turn themselves on? Maybe Blaze? Blaze, will you open your... Yeah, okay. it works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Test, test, uh, test. Let's see, there is some new messages. Hang on a second here. Um, Okay, got some thank yous, Christopher. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you, folks, for having me. And again, good luck on your final um your final presentations. Okay. So here's here's some details you need to know. Remember the pitch, even though it's in person, is there's the one thing that is has not changed is the uh the approach of the event. It's going to be five minutes total, three minutes for your presentation, two minutes for Q and A. Your three minutes of your presentation will be broken down to two minutes for the presentation, one minute for a live demo. We will be having a tech check review at the UH West Oahu from four to five o'clock the night before. I do not know how we didn't, we haven't done a live demo and a, uh, a live presentation in three years now. So I don't know what their capabilities are at UH West Oahu. So I want to get all the bugs out in case um, there's something going on relative to the um, um, bring your bring your laptops, bring your pitch on a on a a, um, a USB drive. We may have to load them all on one computer. Um, and we want to do that the night before so that we're not trying to do that in the morning and scurrying. Um, if you're, make sure your live demo, we will have access to Wi-Fi. Make sure your live demo portion is something we can type in as a URL. Uh, I don't know whether we can plug in phones or plug in. So we're going to have to test all that. So if you're going to do something unusual, meaning not a URL that we type in and then play your, you know, show your demo, uh, we'll need to figure that out. Okay. There's, remember your demos portion are not a recorded session. It's not you doing a little one minute video of your uh, your solution. So we've got to figure that out. And so be aware of that as you're uh, working out how to to provide your presentation. Now you need to you need to um, provide this information to um, um, you need to provide this information to the tech judges anyway. Uh, how you access your uh, your deployed solution. Um, so when you're figuring it out for that, make sure you're aware that we have, we're probably gonna have one computer that runs the entire, uh, the, the, the live demonstrations as well as the pitch, okay? So anything you can do to keep that streamlined to make it easier, uh, the less tech hiccups we will have. But 
if you have anything odd, you absolutely, and you're invited to present, you absolutely must come that Friday night so I make sure everything works okay. I just, I just, you know, we, we've had years where we sat there for 15 minutes while we were trying to solve a problem. And I'm trying to avoid that to keep everything moving pretty smoothly. And I'm out of practice for the live presentation side. So bear with me and plan to be at UH West Oahu between four and five on the 16th, because you know you're all going to make it, right? <laughs> so, okay. Um, I don't know if, if George is going to join us today. The second half today is uh, meant to be an Ask Us Anything session. Um, but I also wanted to review really quickly um, how this is all good. Oh, wait, before, sorry. Before I go into this afternoon session, we get to have another icebreaker. <laughs> I almost forgot. Hang on a second. Let me get all prepped here. Okay, I'm going to share my slides so you can see why I'm saying this. So Thelma can be a spaz at times if you haven't figured that out. Okay, so our afternoon, uh, this second uh, uh, icebreaker uh, conf contest. Again, um, we're gonna go to the eighth person again, um, and you're gonna wait until I type, send the words go, go, go in to chat, right? Uh, and this is for the $25 Starbucks gift card. And remember, you need to be present to win. So if you're going to leave, don't bother answering this question. Uh, the question is, which do you prefer, Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Nice, nice, nice. All right. All right, well, thank you very much for, for playing with me today. <laughs> uh, I will be calculating the, uh, the responses. And uh, so Christopher, can you tell us a story about uh, how, I'm gonna ask you a question so I can go figure out who won this session <laughs> before I go into the afternoon session. So I'm gonna put you on the spot and ask you to uh, tell us why you, um, learn the pitch training, learning how to pitch was really good. I remember you talking about this last year. I'd like you to share that story again um, and how you found it really helped you with your job choices and things you ended up doing for Microsoft. Would you share oh. that story for us briefly, please? Oh yeah. So sorry, your question was like, uh, why did like my team and I like chose to do the hack and how it helped out long term? No, no, or? no, no. The, qu the question is, is how learning how to be a better pitcher uh, How okay. Does it impact your career choice. Okay, got it. Okay, awesome. So, in terms of like learning how to be a better pitcher, I think um, it relates directly to my role um, at Microsoft for um, product management and program management because the well, the common misconception with like product managers and program managers is that we we basically tell engineers to do stuff and they do it. That's actually not the case. If that was the case, my life would be way easier. But essentially, what you're doing as a program manager and product manager is convincing engineers to do the work that um that you want them to work on this is where pitching comes like comes to play you want to tell you want to show your engineers like oh what is the impact and value of this work that you're proposing them to work on because engineers they're very they're very expensive like they like there's only a limited amount of time in like the work day and work year so you want to make sure that the stuff that you're proposing whether it's like a full-scale project or proof of concept to be something that that is like worth their time and has like a measurable impact for them. And it's it's also like a super meta like conversation too, because like at least for like big tech companies, a lot of um once the fiscal year ends, so if you search up so fiscal year is like different from calendar year. If you search up fiscal year, um it goes in a different um it's a different schedule. But essentially at the end of the fiscal year, um a lot of these big tech companies they have year end reviews on why um on like how much impact that you particular as an individual in the company has made at the company. And you want to convince that you want to convince 
and drive your engineers to work on the most high impact things possible. So it works. So it looks better on them and also on you because that's how you empower others. And in terms of like, um, you know, going back to my career, I think like learning the pitch process has definitely helped me a lot in my current role because I do like every, like every quarter, like we do like several, like as product managers, we do like a bunch of pitches to like the leadership team to make sure that like, oh, like our work like is getting um, funded or like our work like has, has engineers funded to handle it. And oftentimes like some of my work, like, or some of my pitches, like they fail or like they don't get approved. And some of them do it's, you know, failing and like, you know, learning from your failures and moving onward. Like that's, that's just part of like the pitch process. So that's why I stress to you folks today that like, what you really want is like a good starting point because, you know, you won't be like, you won't be, you won't be perfect on the first try. And yeah, I think, I think I hit most of the bullet points you're looking for. I did kill time. So that's, that's also like another. I, I, I got my counts. That was the most important. I got my winners aligned. That's the important part, right? Everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Christopher. And again, thank you for taking the time to do this. And I, I love seeing, um, we had uh, one of our challenge sponsors, uh, team members was on a, a, another uh, post um, previous uh, hack participant. I'm not sure he won, but the confidence and the connections you make with the um, professionals is uh, not only do you get to add something cool to your resume that you've built this solution with a team and teams are really important because not very little gets done these days, one person building something. Uh, that used to happen a lot in the past that people would build solutions on their own and, and then they would manage them. Um, there was a, a, a solution for the state of Hawaii that was one man built. And then he, when he retired, they were like, uh -oh. <laughs> and it died. They actually had to go find a new solution. So these days, one person solutions don't fly. Even if you're a, a, an independent consultant, they, they usually you're just working with another bunch of independent consultants or a team, uh, an in-house team to build something. You're never, you're never building something one-off. Uh, nobody wants that because it's not maintainable and sustainable. So working with the team, doing all this stuff, being able to present yourself in a, in a, in a good manner, in a, uh, the practice of presenting yourself is beneficial. Uh, like Christopher stated is, um, Every job interview is a pitch presentation. You're, and the, the, the product you're selling in that case is yourself. So learning how to do this is a long-term benefit to you and your careers, okay? Okay, uh, somebody, Dave, Dave is asking, Dave's iPhone, not Dave, but Dave's iPhone <laughs> is asking whether or not, Christopher, you would be willing to share a LinkedIn profile with everybody so they can reach out to you if they want to. Oh yeah, um, I shared it in the slide deck, but I can also paste the link down uh, in the chat right now, actually. So I'll Perfect. go and find that. And um, it takes us a little while to get recordings, as you can all tell. I think I finally got the recordings from kickoff day. I'm expecting them for over this weekend, our first thing Monday. Uh, sorry, everybody. Um, but the slide deck, which he will provide to me by the end of today, will get up there sooner than later. So, so if you would share your deck with me before you uh, sign off today, Christopher, I'd appreciate that. So. Okay, I think that's all we need on pitch training, unless you have some questions uh, for about the pitch or for me or for Christopher. Anything else on pitch you have to ask? Remember, five minutes total. Two, one, two, okay. I see a raised hand, Courtney. So when we're doing the hack pitch, who's our audience? Like we have the end user, the challenge sponsor, the judges, and they all like, I guess it's different audience. They're, they're different people who want different things. So who are we um, pitching to? The judges, I'm gonna be blunt here. They're the ones who are scoring you. So you wanna pitch to the judges. Um, now our judges, uh, for this year are, um, once again, Doug Murdoch, the CIO of the state. Um, so far we have four other judges, um, 
our terabyte sponsors get they get to be judges. So Hawaiian Airlines, uh, Transform, Transform Hawaii Government, uh, Verizon, and Google will all have judges as well. So these are some people who have some expertise. Those those last four will know what what's going on. And Doug is a CIO, so he's kind of savvy too. So be aware that these this the 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 governor's not watching. Well, the governor was savvy the previous one. So, um, so that that's um, that's to, that's who's giving you the score. So that's who you really want to talk to. Now, we do have a People's Choice Award, which is a separate prize, uh, and that will be um, your audience will tell uh, vote on who they like best. Now, if you have if you have one of those twelve person teams, you might win just because you all vote for yourself. But I didn't say that out loud, did I? No. Um, so the real your audience, uh, who you're presenting to, is the judges. Now, you, we have judges, we have sponsors there besides the sponsors that are on the judging panel. We'll have an audience of about a hundred people besides yourself. You know, in addition to including yourself as the hundred, the audience is about a hundred plus people. Okay. Um, and then um, I think, and then there'll be volunteers and stuff like that. But the people who are scoring you are the the five or six judges. Does that help? Yes. Thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we move on to any other, the submission process and rules. That's one thing I really want to cover here because it's different now. Any other questions? Um, and again, if you have any questions for GitHub, um, I am. That's all on George. We don't don't ask me to address things. Don't ask me to add people. Go right to George. He's on Slack. He's real responsive. If you want, you can also. There's also a a, a, a tech team help channel. You can ask him in there. He's monitoring. That's his channel. Uh, he's the head of the tech judges. So, uh, and we have just so you know the tech judges. We have five tech ju judges. There might be a sixth one. We're still working that out. Every application that submits gets two tech judges to review. We don't want one person reviewing because you know one guy, one judge could be really super easy and one could be super hard. And if you get the super hard guy right? Uh, then somebody else is, doesn't have a good as an application and you, they get the super good guy. So what we find is that having two judges balances out the score to bring it to an average. And that average tends to be, and I've noticed uh, this is like the fifth year we've done it this way, six year, uh, it balances out pretty well. So um, that's why we have two judges. Um, and so I can help you with in the actual technical tech review is done by managed by George. So again, if something comes up, he probably will reach out to you if there's something weird about your submission or anything like that. I do a lot of stuff for this event, but that's one thing I get to go, yeah, there's someone else doing it. <laughs> so please direct your questions about tech review and, and GitHub to George. Um, I'm I can I can answer anything on Slack submission and rules and you know, processes, feel free. I will answer. I'm, I think I'm pretty good at answering you pretty quickly. Uh, so, so you know how to reach me. I'm on Slack. Most of you should have my email address too by this point. So, all right. So the oh, real thing I, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, one thing I want to add with the, um, that, you know, the judge and target audience questions um, that Courtney asked. So um, one thing I want to point out is like, your your judges they have day jobs they are like they have specialized industries that they're in so one cool um technique you can do is actually look I guess like if you have the ability to look up your judges or have a sense of like what industry your judges look your judges work in you can start to like reason over like what types of OKRs are key results they're trying to drive and hopefully and maybe like have your pitch tailored to resonate with their industry or their um specialties. I think one one example is like I think my year for um hack a lot of the judges I felt were either in government or working with um some sort of like tour, something tourism related. So what really resonated with them was the fact that um for our map app like it's scale like the the functionality scales not only UH Manoa but also to like place like place hotspots like Waikiki because both you know tourists and both students they have they kind of have the same issue they want to know what's popping they want to find stuff out so you know. If there is a way for you, like on the hack website, to like get an understanding or like see what like 
you know, where your judges come from, you might be able to like tailor your pitch to something that could resonate with them. You might not be able to hit every one of them individually, but you can sort of like, you know, chance and cast like a semi broad net. That's probably good enough to get to get you um, some resonation or for, get, for, for whatever you say to resound like a little bit to them. But so the, my the, two cents. Daniel Liu is going to be one of the judges and he's on the Google channel at Slack. Uh, so they all have profiles, so you could, you know, reach out to them and ask them some questions. Um, Hawaiian Airlines, I'm not sure who's going to be from there, but they're, if they're coming from the IT department. So uh, these are guys who are building solutions for the Hawaiian Airlines apps. That's another one. Uh, third one, uh, Christine is from Transform Hawaii Government. And well, she is not a technic uh, a, a coder or anything like that herself. Uh, her organization is designed to um, uh, find ways to improve and streamline the government. And so, and she's been, this is her eighth year as a judge. She's very savvy at this point. So just, you know, show her. And, and what, what I do is I will provide all the use cases to the judges before um, before the, the final, I'll probably supply them this coming week so they have some time to review them. So they understand what the, the credentials are, right? They understand what the, the, the asks are from the, um, uh, the, the, use, uh, the use cases. So in fact, I'm gonna bring up um, the screen here in a second. Um, and that, and, and so you, 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 need, you do need to make sure that you're responding to these kind the certain, the care, the criteria that the, the judges are working on. The fourth judge is from Verizon. You guys all met him. That is, um, Irwin. Uh, and he is, uh, he's had technology in his past, but he's now more business sales type tech man guy. So, Again, but he understands good presentations. He does them all the time, like Christopher was describing. You know, he does them from business all the time. So he understands when people are delivering good information. So those are your primary. Doug Murdoch is the CIO of the state. He's heard hundreds of presentations from potential providers to the state. So again, he understands when he sees, and he, this is again his fourth year, I think now. I think he's been... He's been see it, running this event with me. He's the one who hired me, by the way. So 20, 19, 20, 21, 22. And so this is his fifth year, my fifth year of running it. Um, so he knows what he's doing too. So it, it, again, what they're looking for is, um, here, I'm going to share this screen with you for a second over here. here all. So the, make sure you go and visit the... Um, hack judging criteria page and this section down well make sure that you're covering all this when you do your submission but for the judging there's a bunch of really good information in here right so i share the use cases with them so make sure that your what your solution does is actually satisfies the requirements of the challenge that's one of the, the boxes they they got a, they can score for five up to five points on. So if you if if you're doing the um, um, zero waste challenge one and you never bring up you know uh, sustainability, they're going to go. They didn't even like uh, touch the requirements zero right. So be aware of that uh, originality and design. Uh, they're gonna, we actually have you present in groups. We do all the high schools together and then we do all the um, Ask Us together and all the Marine together. And so they get to compare your solutions compared to everybody else's solutions. So come up with some originality and, and uniqueness, right? Um, utility and impact. Um, do the functional components of the solution application seem user-friendly and would it have a positive impact on the users? So basically that's saying like, so for example, using the zero waste again, it's super easy for somebody to uh, get their money back if they do it that way, if you do it that way, right? It's no big deal to, to take out the, 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 the container and to get it back in, super easy, again, using the app. Um, 
so that would be what an example of how, what you would want to make sure your solution does. Uh, presentation and delivery, that's just when you're on stage, do you, you seem fairly confident and comfortable? And again, we have, they understand nerves. They, they probably get nervous themselves when they have to be on the screen. I get super nervous so that I start talking really fast. I've gotten better at this on camera and I'm really hoping I don't end up having to be MC. We have somebody else invited to be MC and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be MC. I don't want to have to be on stage by myself. So I understand how you feel. So this is, um, this, this is, you know, no pain, no gain. <laughs> this is a good opportunity to, you know, we used to, you know, in high school, and maybe you guys in high school do this still, uh, we used to have in our, I think it was our English class, you'd have to have, we always had that module where you had to give a presentation and I hated it. I dreaded it. So uh, I, 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 and I still to this day get nervous in front of, and, you know, the audience is going to be a hundred plus people. So don't let that get you nervous. Just remember, just relax, look right at the judges. Don't look at the whole big audience. Talk to the judges. They're the ones who are scoring you and leave it at that. Okay. Any last questions on uh, that portion? Okay. So now the next thing I want to share with you, we're going to move on. Um, and feel free to stick around if you want, um, <clears throat> Christopher, because we might get some more questions for you. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the HACC 2023 project submission form. This is on the, if you go to the HACC website, the link to this is um, if you, uh, registration. If you go to the registration tab, um, there is a, it talks about how to register and then tech review begins. Um, and then in that section, there's a project submission. That link will take you to this link. If you fill it out, it is editable by the same email address. I'm going to ask only the captain or one person on your team submit this per team. Uh, if we get multiple submissions, it's going to confuse the judges and we're not going to know which one to use. So we only have two and a half days to judge everything. So let's keep this snappy. Um, if you don't get it in by 9 a.m., uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a really nice person and I try to be flexible, but you only have so much time now. So um, try not to, uh, try not to uh, overdo it. Uh, to try not to push the, the envelope here, okay? Uh, I, I tend to give a little leeway. And uh, for this thing, I'll probably, and because it's all new, I'll give you a little leeway, but not a lot because I only have, I have to have answers by, it starts 9, 9 a.m. on the 13th, and I have to have the answers by midday of the 15th. So if you, if you miss because better off submitting one Sunday evening and then continuing to work on your app solution, right? Because the big thing is, is that that works. So if you have something working code, put in your submission form sooner than later. Now I'm not saying put it in today. That would be a little early. Um, so you fill out this form. It has all the instructions on here. Um, uh, if you have a, if you have code, you'll need a GitHub repository. Uh, one email address, team named. I need the team name, not your solution name. So if you're Team Bops and your solution is Our Great Marine Solution, don't put Our Great Marine Solution on here. Put Bops, please. Again, sorry, Bops. I happen to remember your name, so I'm not saying you'll do it wrong. But every year, I always get the solution name on these things, and we can't figure out who it belongs to. So please, 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 team name. That's the important thing. You can give us a, you can give us the solution name in your discussion section. That's great. I don't care, but team name, please. Um, and then they'll, you know, what inspired us. A lot of these questions are the similar questions that were on Dev Post, so that we can um, continue to uh, keep the same kind of uh, criteria uh, that we've judged before. Um, and then you should tell us what tools you use. By the way, if you guys are using Salesforce for your solution and you already know that, 
Salesforce is really curious to see who's using them. So please go to the Salesforce channel on the hat, uh, Slack channel and say, hey, we're using you <laughs> and give them your team name so they know. So they, they, they're, they're, they're guys who really are curious and they think it's great. Um, I know. So is uh, the T777 plus using Salesforce again this year? That's what I told them. Oh, you, you should be able to open your mic. I think I enabled that. Uh, we're not we're not a hundred percent certain right now, but um, we might be using it. You don't have to. I just I'm just saying. You know, you were asking questions, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, so I, I so the, if you could tell us the tools you used, it'll give us a better idea of whether because we also need to know if you're a low code or no code solution, right? So mobile and coded get lumped into one group and the no code, low code get lumped into a second group of prize winnings. Um, so then the second section is submission information. You want to describe, this is where you can like um, give you, give us your team, the solution name, like my, my cool app, right? We're team bops, but my, my cool marine solution app, right? That's where you can put it here. Uh, deployment credentials and details. How can the judge go in and see your work, working solution? Because they want to do a test drive, right? They want to see how it works. So if you have any questions about how to deploy and so forth, um, if you do a low code, no code, you're going to have to give us your credentials. The not, not not me, but the, and this is all private, so you can do it right here. In the past, we used to have to email you. Only you and the Jack judges and me sees these answers. So your, your stuff is safe. Um, and uh, what, what I need you to do then is to go in and um, I probably should be obscuring some of this stuff because who knows what, who's on this web call. Um, so anyway, so you go in and you answer these questions. If you, at the second, the next section is um, solution type, coded, low code, mo mobile. Once you ask that, it'll take you to a different section to answer those kind of questions so that we have a better idea of what we're dealing with uh, when we're looking for the uh, doing the, the tech review. That's how it's happening this year. Again, team name is really important. How, what's your, what, whether it's a coded or non-coded solution or a mobile app, that way we know how it's, we're gonna like help you with your, demo, your, your live demo, as well as the, the judges will know how to test drive your tool. That's, uh, I think I have, that's all I know um, about that I think you need to know about the, the solutions. Um, I think I gave you what you need, what's gonna happen with the tech review, two judges. Uh, they score a maximum of uh, 30 points each, um, six criteria, five points each, 30. So you get a potential score, max score of 60 divided by two. So if you get a third of uh, 60 out of 60, that's 100%. If you get 30 out of 60, that's 50%, right? So um, so whatever your number is divided by 60 will give you your percentage. Your percentage will rank you. Um, and we have two sets of rankings. We have a high school group of rankings, and then we have the everybody else. But the stu the high school kids also get thrown into the everybody else. So you get... High school kids get two opportunities. They get an opportunity to compete against their other high school teams, and they're competing uh, against the the open in the open area as well. I just you get last year we had one of the, the high school's teams win first place. So I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying we want to make sure you had a a you know they you tend to be a little newer at the programming side. So we want to make sure you have an opportunity to see success as well, so. All right, I've done a lot of talking now. What questions, if any, do you have? Oh, no, okay. George will not be joining us. He tested positive for COVID this morning. Oh, no, hate that dang thing, okay. Are we allowed to have cue cards in the presenter? 
Did you hear me? Uh, I no. Repeat whatever you were asking. Vivian. Are we allowed to have cue cards when we're presenting? Yeah. Okay. We're just yeah. I didn't remember from what we were talking about last time. Um, you obviously don't want to be doing this, right? <laughs> you want to just like be able to glance, you know, suddenly glance down and check your your notes and stuff like that. That I. That's no problem. You're going to be actually have a, there's a podium there. So if you want to, you can stand behind the podium if you feel more comfortable to like hide a little bit, or you can like be on stage, right? Well, will the um, PowerPoint that we submit get downloaded or will it be like viewed in like Google Drive or something? No, no, no. Um, you can give me a PowerPoint. Okay. Th good question, Bibiana. Thank you. PowerPoint's great. PDF is great. Google Drive is great. I always display it in whatever you give it to me in. Now, I might convert PowerPoints to PDFs. That usually doesn't get all garbled, but you can't upload a PowerPoint and have expect it to work in Google Drive. I wouldn't do that to you. So, yeah, I was just wondering in terms of yeah. like animation. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you have animations, make sure I know um, so that I know to keep you in PowerPoint. We'll have we will have PowerPoint on the on the device we use for the presentation stuff. So because it's a it's a state it'll be a state laptop in there. They have uh, they have uh, Microsoft as one of their providers, so that won't be a problem. Um, Canva is another good slide area. Um, those I would download as a PDF and not have a lot of animations in it because Canva doesn't translate. It translates horribly to PowerPoint. It translates horribly to Google Slides, uh, but it does do beautiful presentations. So um, I've been using that a lot in another project. So consider that one, it's free and it has a lot of good content there. So. <clears throat> what else do you guys need? Questions? Obviously, um, George, George is ill, but so he might be a little slower in responding, but if you need anything, um, just ask. Fortunately, the, the, the tech review isn't until next Saturday, uh, Sunday, Monday, a week from this coming Monday. So uh, fingers crossed he's feeling better by then. So. All right, well, I don't wanna keep you guys even uh, with with us uh, for a while now. Um, anything else for anybody else before we? Oh, prizes! I guess you want your prizes. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, so uh, submitting your project. Let me just so remember. This is the section I was talking about on that uh, on the registration form. Please come over and review this section, and make sure uh, you th this. This link right here is good for you, okay? Uh, continue to join us on Slack. Here's the uh, the, the channels. Uh, and as I was asking, if you are planning on using Salesforce, please let them know, they, they ask. Uh, and then here's our challenge sponsors, but I'm pretty sure you know where they are at this point. November 18th, uh, 9.30 to 2 p.m. Um, we usually ask you to be there by nine in person to register. It takes a little while when you have a hundred people showing up. Uh, and then um, the uh, same location, again, I'll have addresses and everything. I'll post it in uh, Slack as well as it'll be on the Eventbrite. Um, and then on the same multi-purpose room, we'll be doing the tech check the night before from four to 5 p.m. Okay, well, there's the there's the there's the slide we all want to see contest winners. Okay, must be present to win. Let's see if you're there. I gotta go find my where I wrote down the winners. Okay, so favorite Thanksgiving um, dessert.